Hello everyone and welcome to Operation Solar Ray. I'm Camille Salzar Hadaway and today we're sharing a huge season with you. It all starts with a new squad that specializes in stealth and is led by none other than Kavera herself. It's called Ghost Eyes. The new operator will be joining this covert crew and creative director Alexander Karpazes is here to reveal more. Now, brace yourself because there's a lot happening this season and you don't want to miss it. Hey everyone, super excited to introduce Operation Solar Raid, probably our biggest season ever. From top to bottom, we're adding a ton of features that you've asked about, including cross-play, cross-progression. We know this has been really important for you. The team's been working super hard to deliver it. And we have so, so much more. This season, we're introducing another new squad. It's Ghost Eyes, led by Kavera, and a newcomer, Solus, is joining the team as well. This is the squad of secrecy, the squad of stealth, and the squad of intel. And you'll get to learn a lot more about their story when we launch the season later. We have Solus, the new operator that's joining Rainbow Six and the Ghost Eyes squad. And we have a new map, Nighthaven Lab, an amazing place to explore and to battle. It's unlike anything else we've ever introduced in the game, and we hope you have a lot of fun exploring it. Anti-cheat and anti-toxicity is one of the most important topics for us, which means it's really special for us today to introduce the reputation score in-game. It's coming to you in a beta phase, so you get to know it a little bit more, and we're introducing more security features in our game to make sure that it is more resilient and more fair for everybody to play. All of this and much, much more, we have quality of life features that are coming in, balancing changes that are coming in, and even more on top of that. So we can't wait to share everything that the team's been working so hard on this season. Operation Solar Raid is coming, and it is a big one. But before we break it down for you, here's a glimpse of your new operator in action on the new Night Haven Labs map. Solis joins the defenders with an electronics detecting augmented reality headset that allows her to not just spot attacker gadgets in action, but also reveal them to her teammates. In the asymmetrical battlegrounds of Siege, Intel is power, and Solis delivers the goods. Attackers will have to play smarter this season, as Solus, the new defender, has her eyes on their gadgets. So how did her high-tech look come together? Concept artist Sunshine Kim will tell us more, while director of gameplay design Jeremy Carvin and game designer Dominic Clement give us the details on her gadget and the new opportunities it unlocks. We wanted Solis's gadget to grab immediate attention from the audience. I immediately thought of examples like Jackal and Nuck. Because of their gadget, you know, the Inox and the HEL creates immediate attention. Their gadgets are something that separates it from just being a generic soldier. And we wanted Solis to have a similar treatment. We allow the gadget to have a little bit more futuristic vibe, while her rest of design is a lot more toned down, which makes the gadget pop up even more. It wasn't enough. There's something missing, we felt. That's when the antenna idea came up, which goes up when it's activated and goes down when it's deactivated. It might be a small element, but it adds so much taste. <laughs> so to design Solis' device, we were looking for something that needed two hands to be operated and something that wasn't going to take too much uh, of the vision space. So we thought about uh, augmented reality. We were very excited with all the modern visual that it could add to the game. So this kit is made of three main parts. The helmet, the bracelet, and the gloves. So when the helmet turns on, the screen switch from transparent to glowy yellow and the HUD elements uh, start to show for the user. The second part is the bracelet. It's used as a placement tag for the ER interface. And this AR interface 
is uh, shaped as a 3D ring. It's used by Solis to interact with the gadget. The last part is the, the scan, and the scan is the middle part of this AR interface. And when the scan is performed, you have this, this pulse of 3D lines that starts and fades in the distance, giving the position of every electronic device on its way. This idea came from a brainstorm that we had, and a question arose, well, what if we have an IQ on defense? You see that there's a lot of electronic gadgets. You have reaching charges, you have claymores, and a tons, of, tons and tons of drones and cameras. So it just made sense that the defense would have a tool similar to what the attackers have. She'll have a zone in the center of her screen where she'll be able to identify these gadgets and tell precisely, okay, that's a drone, that's a claymore, or that's a reaching charge. She's the only one who gets to see this information. If she wants to share with the team, she needs to use our communication tools like voice chats or uh, text chat. But if she wants quick and easy communication with the rest of the team as to like where these gadgets are, are and uh, what to do with them, she can use her secondary abil ability, which will send a pulse on her screen and will smart ping every gadget in the center of her screen. So the ones that are identified will be smart ping, uh, giving a clear indication to the rest of the team where, the, where they are and what to do with them. Usually with loadouts, we try to give flexibility for players. We give the P90 as a primary because it's a super good SMG, super interesting, and another SMG as a sidearm because it's also a really good weapon. But we're also giving Solis a, a shotgun because being able to create, rotate and help on site and help like reshape the map is also very, very interesting for an operator like this. And with the sidearm, again, that is SMG, it allows you to bring the shotgun and still have an SMG at hand if you really need to defend yourself. We're finally giving the P90 to, a, to an operator as a primary weapon, nonetheless a 2-2 operator, so 2 health and 2 speed operator. It's really cool to see a weapon with such rapid rate of fire and a big magazine on an operator that can move quite fast. When Solis has the ability on, she doesn't have any weapons, so she can't really defend herself unless she turns off the ability and then pulls back her weapon. Giving the impact to Solis allows her to kind of help her d destroy any gadgets coming her way as a last resort. If she doesn't have anything else and she's in a panic and she needs to, to deal with the, the utility that she sees or she needs to get away quickly, she can use the impact to create a rotation hole or use the, the impact to destroy any utility that she detects. The bulletproof cam is very useful in combination with the gadget because you can detect a gadget and then use the bulletproof cam with the EMP shot to disable the gadget that you see. She especially is interesting to synergize with Bandit because if you have a bandit that is on a wall trying to bandit trick, she can actually be right behind him and tell bandit, okay, they're going to be breaching the left wall, the right wall, the middle wall. It can give much clearer information as to where bandit needs to put his batteries. You also have Mozzie. Uh, since Solis is able to detect and spot the, the drones coming towards the site, she can give this information to Mozzie so Mozzie can place his vest and hopefully capture as many drones as he can. The Solis has a few counters. If you're facing a Solis that is hankering on site, you might want to bring a Thatcher or the EMP grenades. They're really useful to disable and deny Solis her ability. If you have an IQ also, that's a very useful operator to hunt down Solis because when the advisor is activated, IQ can actually detect it and spot it and hunt down the Solis maybe anchoring on site. If you're facing a Solis that is roaming around, you might want to bring your classic roam clear operator like Lion, Grim, and Jackal. They're very useful to kind of flush out the, these roamers. The thing with Solis is since she doesn't have a weapon when the ability is on, she can be pretty vulnerable. At the end of the day, Solis is an intel collector, so if you know that she's collecting intel and you have an idea on how you can probably trick her, that's also a very useful counter to, to Solis. If you can think of ways, creative ways of kind of like lying to her, it can get some pretty cool, cool interaction. Nighthaven Labs. It's an imposing research base, and it's the new map coming in Operation Solar Raid. Now, I told you about banning maps last season, didn't I? Well, let me tell you this you won't be able to ban this map at launch. You'll hear more on that later, but for now, team lead Jeremy Dowsett is here to take you on a tour of Nighthaven Labs.
So this is actually one of the first maps we've done that actually incorporates the law. It's Night Haven, it's a research facility. The whole map is very, very clean. Even the outside, it has a very corporate feel. But the inside, you'll see, you know, it's like a normal office space with the research lab down in the basement. So the basement only has one bomb site. It's optimized for navigation and flow. And we went for a more optimized design. So it's quite compact in its shape, but there's a lot of entryways from the exterior helipad and there's lots of ingress and egress that you can actually do to the sites. There's a little Easter egg down there, hiding away, not so subtly. So first floor has two bomb sites. It's very clean, there's a cafeteria. There's lots of small rooms, big rooms. There's a warehouse there with some exterior walls. The warehouse is super interesting when you get close to it because it's an open area with a, a catwalk above it. So what you're going to find, especially if you're playing on the second floor or you're trying to come in from the second floor, dropping down onto the first floor, you're going to find it's interesting. The entryways on the catwalk give you some quite interesting sight lines and opportunities for quite sneaky and quite fun kills. Second floor, like the basement, uh, only one bomb site is a little bit smaller, a little bit more compact. The warehouse is an interesting entry point because you, you're obviously exposed from gunfire below because of the catwalk. You go into the command center and servers, which are the bomb sites, and there's a couple of breakable walls off of the warehouse catwalk. There's an exterior wall on a balcony that allows you to um, get in quite quickly and hold some angles, and then there's meeting and electrical. On one of the roofs, there's a risk versus reward run out to reinforce a hatch. Otherwise, it opens up some pretty interesting lines of sight, but you need to, you know, wait for the prep phase to finish, get out and, you know, so break the barrier, get out and go do it. The map should be going into all of the playlists that we normally release upon. It's not the same as any other map. You know, there's unique things in this one. And the map looks superb. The artists, the lighters, everyone did such a great job on this map. I'm looking forward to the reception. Playing with your friends is important. Sometimes they play on another platform. We know you've been waiting for this feature for a long time. And it's coming this season. Crossplay and cross progression. We're delighted to have associate producer Deanna Stanley to tell us all the details. We know players have been asking about it and we've talked about it before. It's been a long time coming, so we're super excited to announce that Crossplay is coming with season four. PlayStation and Xbox players will matchmake together and benefit from lower wait times thanks to the larger matchmaking pool. Now for crossplay, PC and streaming platforms will be kept in a separate pool from consoles. We have no intention to merge these two communities right now, but we're super excited to bring our console players together. You can invite players through both first party platforms as well as through your Ubisoft Connect overlay. You'll be able to access your friends list through the social tab and manage your invites, requests, and squad up with your friends from other platforms. We all know communication is key in Siege and it's no different for crossplay. So. Voice communications will be enabled at launch and the local player will be able to speak to and hear cross-platform players as long as they have voice communications enabled in their options and they're on the same team. Of course, you can still manually mute players through the scoreboard during a match or through the player profile side panel. Crossplay will be enabled by default, so everyone will be opted in to start, but you can opt out at any time in the in-game settings. If you do opt out, you're going to receive a message when you try and join a squad with crossplay enabled that lets you know you need to enable the option to join that squad. Crossplay isn't the only thing that's coming this season. We're super excited to announce that cross progression is another feature hitting Siege this season. This is thanks to a data migration that's happening with the season launch. So the first time you log in, you'll see a pop up that lets you know all of your data now lives in the cloud and is accessible from any platform anytime. So keep an eye out because we'll be posting our cross-platform synchronization blog that's going to detail how all of your different save data is handled for each case. For example, your in-game options will remain specific to each platform, as will your equipped loadout. But your packs, operators, skins, and progression will be shared across all platforms and accessible anywhere. Your rank history will be shared between similar platforms. So PC and streaming platforms will be kept in a separate pool from consoles. The highest rank achieved during the season on any console platform will be carried over to all console platforms, and same goes for PC. So for credits and renown, uh, they're going to be added together, so any platform that any player has played on ever is going to be added together and shared. 
So if you're a PC player playing with 800 credits, but you have an old Xbox account with 200 credits, after the data migration, you're gonna have 1,000 credits to spend wherever you like. Penalties will also be shared across all platforms, and the time remaining will be calculated based upon the matches played across all those platforms since the penalties activation. Due to the data migration, we're gonna be rewarding all of our players with an alpha pack at the start of the season. Siege has been live for a long time now, and we know some players have moved around. We're happy that those players are gonna be able to take back those hours they grinded in Siege and play with their friends on any console they choose. Fighting toxicity and improving our anti-cheat measures are an ongoing priority for us. Here is Player Protection and Game Security Director Emmanuel Larive to tell you more about the next step of the reputation system and an update on preparation phase. With the new season that is coming, we are very happy to announce that we will be launching the new reputation system. Since 2020, we have been deploying part of it during a shadow deployment to gather a lot of data from our player base in order to provide a sustainable solution for the long term. We will be starting with the first release in a beta display. The scoring will be private to yourself and available for all players. The reputation system will be looking at your gameplay behaviors, but also your interaction that you have with players. Based on that, it will paint a portrait of you and assign a specific standing. Then based on this standing, we will be triggering during your eight, a set of actions that will be bonuses or penalties. More and more you have a high standing, more and more we will be applying modifiers to you in terms of alpha pack, renown, XPs, and special drops. When we talk about penalties based on your low standing, we mainly talk about game restriction toward the game mode. So for example, a player will not have an access to the competitive playlist, but also the test server. But we will also have restrictions and modifier to the currency, the alpha pack, the progressions. So this first release will be very important and key for our success. We will be informing all players about how they are being perceived by the system, but also by the other players, so that they can act accordingly, but also adjust their behavior or interaction with other players. By providing guidance, information, and by bringing this new standing icon, we will be improving the play experience of everybody. By the way, I want to share with you some data toward the reputation penalties. We have seen the decrease of friendly fire, by better guiding and informing all players. When we are looking at the number of rounds impacted with at least one team kill per round, we can see a decrease of 10%. And I'm talking about per round, not per match. So this is great. We want to move away from the toxicity that the people are facing, and we want to improve the gameplay experience and provide a safer place for everybody. This is key. We are really glad to say that we will be removing the friendly fire from the preparation phase. We heard you. By removing it, we are just securing the whole experience for everybody. So there will be no mistake anymore, so that everybody can focus on their preparation phase and then start the battle. In terms of design, if you shoot at the teammate, there will be no damage, there will be no reverse friendly fire, and the bullet will not go through. I hope you will enjoy this new change and we will be looking at your feedback during the season launch. We are always looking at new solutions to bring more security into the game, but also to better protect all players against cheating. And this is a priority for us. The team over the past months has been working hard to bring a new security measure to fight cheating. The goal is to decrease the cheating problem that you are facing and we are really confident in this new solution that we are bringing into the game. We will monitor the effectiveness of it on our player base, on the cheater, and for sure, I will come back to you with some insights. Operation Solar Raid is going to fully revamp the way our ranking system works. It is now time for you to shine in Ranked 2.0. Associate producer Killian Callow will break down the whole host of changes that are coming. Get ready to play more ranked.
Right now, the rank playlist is a pure skill system in which there's only one value, the MMR. The MMR is used for rank and skill. Every start of the season, when we do the soft reset, because it's needed for rank progression, we are hurting the matchmaking fairness. After this soft reset, we have the placement matches to try to guess your rank as soon as possible. What are the changes in the core system? We are splitting skill and rank into two different values. The skill in one hand will be hidden and only used for matchmaking. On the other hand, the rank will be visible and only used for progression. We are removing the placement matches because the only value that will be reset is the rank. You will start your rank progression at the beginning of the ladder. From now on, there will be rank points. There will be also five divisions per rank. Each division will have 100 points. Also, to help you in this progression, we included systems like the Demotion Shield that will prevent you from losing ranks easily. The current reward system is only giving you one chance per season, the one of your highest rank. For instance, if you are a silver player, you are not getting the chance below your rank, bronze and copper, and that doesn't make any sense. From now on, there will be one reward per division, so five rewards per rank, with some exclusive new items. If you finish one season in gold 5, you will get as well the rewards from silver 1, silver 2, bronze and copper. We also have an update regarding the squad restriction. With the old system, it was needed to put a skill limit within a squad to ensure balanced matches. Players should always be able to play with their friends. Because of that, it was a focus for us to provide a new solution. We are removing the squad restriction and including a new algorithm for squads that will ensure balanced matches. So please, send us your feedback. We would love to hear your thoughts to keep improving and working on the system. Now it's time to talk Battle Pass. Operation Solar Raid is introducing a brand new progression system. Instead of a traditional linear progression, you will choose the path you take to target the rewards you want and unlock them sooner. Here's a little video to show you what I mean and then Business Strategy Director Mohammed Ben Hanada will tell you more. Rainbow Six Siege Battle Pass has evolved to become more tactical, offering you new ways to unlock the rewards that matter to you faster. We are introducing a novel progression system that allows you to create a custom strategy based on your interests. As you navigate the map, you can choose what paths and rewards to prioritize. For example, if you main smoke, you can follow the most efficient path to collect all smoke exclusive rewards. Each time you go up one Battle Pass level, you earn Battle Pass tokens. Now you can actively use these tokens to unlock tiles. Exclusive rewards are available to all players on some of the tiles, while Battle Pass Premium owners get even more. New Battle Pass gadgets like the Breach Charge will allow you to forge your own unique path. You can now strategize ways to unlock the rewards that matter most to you, or unlock all rewards in any order you choose. Premium Battle Pass owners receive exclusive perks, including early access to a new season's operator, 30% battle point progression boost, 10% in-game shop discount, and more. Rainbow Six Siege New Tactical Battle Pass. Plan your path, progress your way, pick your rewards. We are really thrilled to bring this new Battle Pass system to our players. We're giving you more choices and more ways to progress into the Battle Pass in order to unlock the rewards that you want first. This is going to be the new Battle Pass standard going forward. And as you saw, we've also added new gadgets for you to interact with the Battle Pass, such as the Breach Charge. Going forward into upcoming seasons, we'll be bringing more gadgets, so stay tuned for that. In April of 2019, we launched the Rainbow is Magic event. This was the, one of the most appreciated events from our community. One key aspect that was well talked about in the community was the drone skin, the cute little cat that we've had. So I'm really, really excited today to announce that we'll be bringing drone customization to the game. First off, it will launch in the Battle Pass, but stay tuned because it will be also available in events and also in the store in the future. Next up, we've got balancing updates affecting some operators' health and speed, as well as changes aimed at leveling the playing field when it comes to movement while aiming down sights. Here's game designer Robert Cole in our Barcelona studio. Right now, 
Three speed operators have a clear advantage when it comes to picking and fragging. We want to equalize the playing field, as we feel like shooting should require precision and not luck. So this season, we are making it so all the operators will have the same ADS movement speed, which will be the ones from the three armor operators. Because of the ADS movement speed change, we are putting together another change to some of the health and speed of the operators. For example, we are changing sense from a three armor operator to a three speed operator, because we feel like their gadget functions much better with the speed, and it will help them with the side takes and executes. Another example is Dokkabi. We are changing her from a 2-armor, two 2-speed two operator to a 3-speed operator because we feel like with our new speed she will be able to move around the map and hack the defender's camera much better. Finally, another example is Osa, which we're changing her from a 2-speed, two 2-armor two operator to a 3-armor operator because we feel like the extra health will help her survive the shots to the limbs, the only exposed parts while carrying the shield. With the health and movement speed changes, as well as the ADS movement speed changes, we are excited to equalize the playing field and bring much more variety to the operator meta. Earlier in the show, I told you you wouldn't be able to ban the Nighthaven Labs map at launch. I wasn't kidding. In this quality of life update, we'll tell you more about that, plus details on ability mode and more. Here again, our associate producer, Killian Callow, and game designer, Matthew Lacombe. We know that at the start, it's difficult to get into a new map. With Emerald Plains, we learned that map ban can be too restrictive in some situations. So, for the entire next season, all the maps will have the same chances of appearance in the map ban phase. When the new Night Heaven map will appear there, you will not be able to ban it. At the end of the phase, the random will decide which is the map played in that game. As mentioned, this change will be applied for the entire season and active in ranked and unranked playlists. Alternate ability mode is the continuation of what we started in iCaliber. Last year, during season four, we removed the ability to switch fire mode on your weapons. This season, we're replacing this input with the ability to change the fire mode of your gadgets without equipping your gadgets. For operators such as Capital and Zofia, we will allow the players to switch ability mode when they're not equipped with the weapon. If you're going toward the building, you want to breach something, well, you might want to start with the impact grenades instead of the concussion grenade. So you can switch this as you move toward the building without equipping the launcher. So for Capital, you will be able to change bolts without equipping the crossbow. So if you want to cover your allies with the smoke bolt, you can just change it before you get to the risky part where you have to face the operators. You can just switch it beforehand. We want to reward players that have a plan. If you know what you're going to do, you have a routine, or you know your specific plan that you want to execute in this map, well, we give you the tool to be ready, more efficient when you do so. We started in the high caliber with this feature. We're improving it now, and we're going to use it in the future. We're going to expand on it. We can look forward as to have two inputs for a single operator. It means that reworks, new operators can benefit from this feature. When you're playing with a controller with your drones, you can move forward full speed, but when, whenever you start to input some diagonals in there, you will get a reduction of your speed up to 33%, which means that when you're droning and you're trying to move away from an opponent, you get slowed down a lot. We are removing this limitation so you can have a better experience when droning. It will feel more comfortable and you have more leeway when you try to drone. It will impact all of our drones, be it the regular drone, Mozzie's drone, Twitch drone, Flores drone, Echo drone even. So it will impact all of the controller players using drones. Operators such as Switch and Echo, they have a high value gadget. They move around, they have a really good impact on the, the rounds, but it can be hard to navigate with a controller. Removing this will allow them to have a better time, better experience and have you know a better impact on the game. All right, for this one, I think a little story is going to explain it. Start of the round, you locate the bomb, there's a high con, you know that you're attacking this bomb side. One minute inside the round, your teammate falls, drops the diffuser on the floor, and now you suddenly you don't remember where the bomb sites are. Well, we've all been there, right? With this change, what we're trying to have both the bombs icon and the diffuser icon, so you know exactly what you have to do. What we have right now is you have two bombs icon or a diffuser icon on screen. We are combining those two together. If you discovered a bomb site previously, they will always remain visible. 
They will either be full yellow because you have the diffuser on someone, or they'll be black because you have to get the diffuser first. Tuning your loadout to fit your playstyle is important. And the shooting range is a great place to get your weapon and attachment pairings just right. Game designer Robert Cole is back to detail a new update for the shooting range to help you get everything dialed in. We are very happy with how the shooting range is functioning right now. But it's true that players struggle to remember which guns and attachments they tested, as well as they cannot compare the recalls of the different weapons. This season, thanks to our amazing Shanghai team, we're introducing a new feature to the shooting range, the shooting records. It will be accessible through the same input as the scoreboard, and it will help players keep track of the different weapons they tested. We hope that this new feature will help players keep track of all the different weapons they tested, as well as compare the different recoils of the weapons. Now, as a player, you will be able to find the best loadout that works for you, without having to remember all the different weapons and attachments that you tested. The team is continuing to expand Siege's accessibility options to ensure more members of our community can play the way they want to play. From Archive Studio, associate producer Jane Gonchar is here to share more on new team color customization and advanced controller options. We are very excited about our new update for accessibility. In season four, we spot the most important objects and gadgets in game that requires color change. So now your team color preference will be applied to the generic gadgets, CCTV, drones, operators' gadgets, and their elite skins. Your team is blue and the opposite team is red by default. But we know for colorblind players, it's harder to distinguish some objects in certain situations, so we brought ability to customize, starting with three colors, blue, red, and orange. Your color preference could be changed and applied anytime you need it. As a positive impact, we expect players to faster recognize who owns object in game. As an example, you are in attacker's team and the opposite team has Mozzie. So when you enter the room and you see your drones and it's activated, you see the LEDs working and it's colored on your enemy's team color. That means that enemies hacked your drone and using it at the moment. In year eight, we aim to bring more accessibility options. So we are looking how to expand the list of objects, gadgets, lasers, and even bring more colors to customize. This is a process and it's just the beginning. Aiming is an important component for Siege. So later this season, advanced controller options will be available for console and PC players. By default, you won't see any changes to your aim. These options are uh, intended for more advanced players, so you need to go enable it in a controls option menu. You will have the range of settings to tune your aim to get the feel that you are looking for. These options should help controller players to improve their gameplay performance as well as general comfort. We'll be listening to the feedback you have on this feature since our goal is to increase flexibility and comfort for different inputs that we have in the game, so stay tuned. And finally, you could play Operation Solar Raid on the Season Test Server this week. You could put Solus and her gadget to the test, explore the new Night Haven Labs map, and get a feel for the new features of Operation Solar Raid. Have fun, and be sure to share your feedback on R6 Fix. Now before we go, we have that one more thing just for you. It was born of a collaboration that's close to our heart and sure to make a few new Yana fans happy out there. Here is the new Elite skin for Yana, inspired by Nier Automata.